now that we have this guy uh, kind of wandering around and uh, do it its thing and responding to us somewhat intelligently like when we're close to him he jumps uh, and then he just uh gets kind of stun locked <laughs> until we run away again uh, at which point he will resume his running around it's not very um intelligent but it is artificial so it is artificial almost intelligence uh, that we have made let's take a look at the state trees and a thing that i skipped over uh, in the start and that is evaluators and global tasks because these things are kind of the same thing under two different names uh, they are both code that runs over the entire tree so all these states when we enter them their tasks will run their enter task and when we exit them it will run the exit task and then in the meantime, it can run a tick as long as a state is active. A global task is just something that does all that on the basis of an entire tree. So usually that is mostly uh, something to do with updating information uh, on tick. For instance, we have this uh, distance to player check, right? Which we specifically coded to check our distance to a certain actor, but maybe we're using that in a bunch of different things. Maybe we're using that uh, as a check. Maybe we're using that to decide things in certain tasks. That distance might just be a value that we want to be able to get easily in a bunch of different places. In which case, we can make a task for that and add that to our global tasks. And global tasks are just the same as any other task. So uh, any task that you make can just be added in here as a global task. And every node or every like state in your state tree has easy access to global tasks so it's effectively just a task that is running on the root of your state tree more or less except that of course you can have multiple like roots like, i can add a sibling to the root, and um if i wanted to replicate what a global task can do now both of these also then need to have like a parent so i need to add like another sibling and then add both of these into there and it becomes a little messy real quick we can just do it with a global task and everything will just have easy access to that so that's where global tasks come in now evaluators are effectively the same thing but they are tasks specifically made to run on entire trees so if you have a task already that you're like ah but i actually kind of just want to run that uh, globally you can make them into a global task and that's kind of like a good enough way to do it if there's any code that is specifically going to be designed to be run on a uh, tree as a whole that's where you just make an evaluator for it instead the reason that both exists is this is kind of like just nice to be able to reuse some code that you might already have and global tasks existed before evaluators i believe so evaluators are just kind of like the new and improved version of global tasks so let's make a, a evaluator here that will keep track of our origin position so the position where we started so that we can make our patrol not move away too far from that we're going to make a patrol within a certain radius of its starting position instead of within a certain radius of its current position i think that will be good to do so to do that we can simply go into our blueprint classes here and we can type evaluator and get the state tree evaluator blueprint base and we call this something like uh, ste state tree evaluator get start location and this will be relatively straightforward uh to make but we have three functions here tree start tree stop and tick so when the tree starts we can do something when the tree stops we can do something and we can of course do something on the tick as long as the tree is running for this of course we want to just get our position when the tree starts so we add a variable for our uh, context actor so it'll be actor of type context in the category and then the actual type will be of type actor object reference and we'll just get the actor location of that and we'll promote that to a variable and we'll call this uh, location and then in the category we will mark this as an output and that's kind of everything that this needs to do this just will uh, get and save our starting location so that we can use that easily throughout our state tree so these things are kind of more how you uh, get and set dynamic things 
these evaluators will themselves set values based on maybe other bindings that they have and then other tasks can read from the evaluators so a lot of this might happen within like tick and you can specifically uh, optimize that to only tick when they get certain events of course so that they don't run constantly uh, like i showed you in i believe the previous video so now that we have an evaluator we can add it as the start location and we can see that indeed it has a location out so now if we go into the move to uh, we have this move to location uh, instead of uh, doing this and the find location we'll actually change the find location i think so instead of taking in the actor uh, context here because we don't need that anymore what we want to do is open up our find location and we just make a origin variable uh, that we set to being a vector and that will be an input because it's always going to be required for this to work and then we can get rid of this context because we don't really need that anymore. We just use this origin instead. And for this origin, we still can just use the actor's location if we wanted to. Uh, again, I think that might not quite work in uh, the current 5.4 version, but in 5.5, that does work. So here in move two, we have this uh, origin and we can bind that origin uh, to anything on the character. So yeah, there's also in 5.5 and beyond there's also just a like get actor location uh, option whenever you want to bind a vector like this so you would be able to do that uh doesn't seem to exist in 5.4 uh, but instead what we do is we get the starting location from the evaluator that we made and now it's going to always try to find something within 750 units of the starting location so it's never going to uh get outside of like a circle that is i don't know about this big which we can test by just doing this. So uh, we, we can just stand here for a little while and uh, instead of walking even further away from its origin position now, it will just uh, stay within a certain radius, which is quite nice. That is especially good if we start doing other, uh, like more complex stuff, right? Because we can do something where uh, we can add a chart state to this and call this uh, patrol. And we can get rid of this uh, jumping because that was just for an example. Let's get rid of the transition to that as well. And then when we complete this state, we're just going to go immediately back to move two. We're not going to go back to a root. And the reason that we do that is we're going to put these two within the patrol state instead. Because we can add another sibling to the patrol, so another chart to the root. And this will be chase, for which uh, we will change the move to non-ai as well and we'll also put in a goal actor here so we'll just call that goal actor and we'll change move to location uh to not be an input uh anymore because it's no longer necessarily required because we can do either this or this and inputs always need to be filled in so we can provide in an actor instead and uh, with that it effectively becomes a possible chase uh, task as well so within chase we add a child state where we uh, do it, we move to. So that is move to non-AI. And we're going to be moving to the actor's target that we set up before. And it's just going to entirely ignore the move to location uh, because the move to actor or location will prioritize moving to actors. So when that is finished, what we want to do is we want to move on to the next state. And the next state, let's actually call this run to target and when it is finished doing that it will uh, add a sibling state we'll call this jump again and it'll just do the jumping of course this would be uh, attacking in any reasonable uh, video game but we don't have any like combat setup for this uh, example of course so we just add a task for jumping which will then uh, get us back to roots which will get us back to patrol and then patrol is going to have a transition on it for on tick it's going to check this every frame as long as it's within patrol it's going to try uh to move to chase under the condition that we have a distance to the player that is less than 500 units but that's a one-way street right so if it is less than 500 units and i manage to get away from it for more than 500 units it's still going to stay in the chase state until it is 
specifically told not to be in the chase state. So unless it gets to me or I set up something in the chase state to go back to patrolling. So let's set something up in the chase state to go back to patrolling. Uh, if the uh, state is uh, on tick, we transition back to patrol. Uh, this interface also looks better in 5.5. It actually just shows you a miniature version of this hierarchy instead of just a dumb list like this. So again, the system is being improved constantly. Uh, but the condition, uh, let's check the distance to player. If it is greater than a thousand, I uh, will consider that having uh, escaped. And we'll compare that to the target actor for both of those as well. So now what this will do is we will uh, be in the patrol state, which we'll just move to, wait, move to, wait, move to, wait, until the player or its target gets within a certain radius, at which point it will go into chasing. It will run after us. And the whole reason that I'm setting this entire thing up is because when it goes back to patrol, it will go back to patrol around its original location. So I can lure it away very far. And then when it loses interest in me, it's going to go back to its original position. It's not going to keep patrolling around the place that I lured it away to, which in a lot of cases, in a lot of games, uh, would break AI and would do weird stuff. Most games have a concept of going back to an origin position for an AI when their task uh, like resets to just patrolling. So we can see he's just patrolling, but when I get within a certain radius, he starts to uh, run after me. But then when he gets to me, uh, well, he will actually always uh, be trying to get me now uh, because I'm still within 500 units. So I think it is a good thing to add in a, a sibling set here as well uh, to wait again. So instead of going back to root, I want this to transition to the next state on completion. So let's go next state. And then I will add in a delay for this one or like four seconds with a random deviation, which can then go back to root uh, to do its entire thing. So uh, let's make it uh, chase us, which is kind of annoying to get it away from its origin position now that it is uh, <laughs> going to wait every single time. But I'm just trying to lure it away from its origin position so that you can see that when um, it resets and goes back to patrolling, it will go back to patrolling with uh, within its like original range. It's not going to just start patrolling around uh, its new position. So as you can see, it runs back to roughly where it started within about 750 units. So that's where things like these evaluators can come in uh, really handy. And again, we can also fairly easily just make an evaluator to like state tree evaluator, get distance to target. This might be useful information for a bunch of different things, right? So we can pretty much just copy a bunch of the stuff like from distance to player like effectively this entire setup we can just do that on tick and we promote this to a variable call it distance make it an output and that's kind of everything there is to it we do need to also make these two uh, into uh, variables the actor of course will be then of type context the target will be of type input because we're going to want to have uh, that always built in. Uh, but just like that, we now have an evaluator that will always have an up-to-date value for our distance. So we can go back into the state tree, add that in as an evaluator, uh, get distance to target. We can set up the target to be the actor target variable. And then we have this as a usable, uh, referenceable, is that a word? It is now a uh, value that we can use anywhere in the state tree. So making these evaluators is kind of a workaround. Uh, instead of using parameters dynamically, you can just make these as little calculations that take in stuff. Like th these are taking in values and these can even like take in parameters or take in uh, things from other evaluators if need be. And then expose the value out for you to use in a bunch of other stuff. So now instead of uh, using this condition for get distance to player, I can just change this fairly easily to a float compare. And I can just compare the get distance to target distance to a number. And I can check whether or not that is less than or equal to. 
And now I can reference that number from a bunch of different places. Everything we did here also technically is possible to do within a global task, but since these are things uh, that are very much just only useful to do within like the context of an entire tree, uh, it does no real use making them into a task and making them into a evaluator is just a little bit smoother, a little bit better. So I think in the next video, what we'll do is we'll make an evaluator that uh, creates a cooldown. Because one of the things that state trees at the time of recording this anyway, uh, is missing that behavior trees do have is the ability to add cooldowns to certain states, which I think is a bit of an oversight that might get added in the future. So that video might become irrelevant at some point. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku.